All right, welcome back, everyone. Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to actually explore the hardware of the Sega CD slash 32X. I'm going to explain a little bit about how it works, a little bit about the controversy that was surrounding it at the time. Um, and I think you're going to love when we actually look at the hookups for this fucking thing, all right? But anyway, let's start at the beginning. At the beginning, there was the Genesis. No, I don't mean Genesis in the Bible. I mean the console, Sega Genesis, or called Sega, uh, Sega Mega Drive outside of the United States. And it looks like I have a speck on my lens because it looks like I have a blur. Look at that. I have a blur. I do. Hmm. That's kind of annoying. Hold on. Let me get a tissue. <laughs> so anyway, yes. The Genesis started it all after the success of the Sega... Oh, that's much better. Oh, wow. Okay. After the success of the Sega Mega Drive... I'm sorry, the Master System, they released the Sega Genesis, and this was a 16-bit console. It was the first of the two 16-bit consoles that came out at the time. Um, and uh, this is actually the Genesis Model 2. Okay? There were two different models of Genesis... I, I take that back. There were three different models of Genesis. The first model of the Sega Genesis is actually the one that I owned when I was a kid. It was wider. Maybe it came out to about here. Okay? And it actually had this odd circular shape on top where you would plug your cartridges into the top of it. Okay? After a while, they decided to redesign the Sega Genesis. Um, to have, uh, I believe at that point they added other video outs. Like I think at one point you couldn't do uh, S video out, and so they added that or whatever. But yeah, they, basically they re-released the Genesis, and it ended up being a little bit smaller, like this. Okay. Now that being said, since the original Genesis was actually bigger, okay, the original Sega CD was a motherfucking beast. Okay. It looked nothing like this. The original Sega CD kind of looked like a VCR. And now, if you've never seen a VCR, go look one up on the internet. Those things were big, chunky rectangles. And what would happen is the, the Sega CD would be underneath, okay? And then your wider Genesis would sit on top of it, and it would fit perfectly. So basically, that unit was a tall-ass mound of fucking electronics. They ended up redesigning it because they wanted it to have a more compact look. And so what they did is they designed this. All you have here at the Sega CD is that it's a CD drive. As you can see, that's where you put your CD inside of it. And your Genesis actually plugs into it like so. As you can see, the Genesis is actually plugged into the side of it almost like a cartridge is exactly what it is this model of Genesis had an expansion port on the side the shape of a cartridge and it would uh, plug into the Sega CD like so and become one unit okay now as I said there was an older version of the Genesis as well that was much wider it was about this wide so what actually happened there's an expansion piece for the side of this Sega CD that adds a good two to three inches on the side here so that the old Sega Genesis could fit on it and you would just like, there were hooks on the bottom of it that you would use to hook the system into place on top of the Sega CD. It looked like a mess, okay? It really did. It looked like a horrendous mess. Now, some of the complaints, the initial complaints about this setup was that each unit itself actually needed a power adapter. That's right. Now, we're not talking, oh, a plug, you know, a little power plug that you plug into anything, you know, like one of these. We're not talking like a normal plug. We're talking one of these motherfuckers. This is actually one of the cords for the Sega CD. It's plugged in. These monstrous power blocks. And so a lot of people complained and said, like, this is kind of ridiculous, you know, we already have a giant plower box plugged in for the, for the Sega Genesis, obviously we've probably got our TV hooked up, you know, now you want us to plug in the Sega CD, we've got two gigantic fucking power blocks plugged in, how are we supposed to do anything with that, okay? So, some of the Sega CD games very easily can be played, you know, Sewer Shark, all you do is you open this sucker up, you put your CD in, you turn it on, and what would actually happen was the system would override the Genesis and realize that there was actually a disc located inside of the Sega CD and it would boot that disc for you. So it kind of overrode the Genesis in a lot of cases, okay? Pretty simple. Nothing too complex. 
load times, load times for games on the Sega CD surprisingly weren't that long. And what I mean is, later generations of consoles, like the PlayStation 1, for example, had significantly longer load times than the Sega CD. Keep in mind that those systems were actually using 3D graphics, as opposed to most of the games, if not all of the games on Sega CD, were still 2D side-scrollers and or full motion video, which is just loading a video that you'll load off of, directly off of the CD. It's not trying to render graphics or anything based off of a CD, and I really think that's probably why it had some quicker load times than the, the, the later PlayStation 1, okay? So that was around 1992 this came out, went into 93, and during this period of time, you know, these lines of games came out, like I said, there was the controversy about how Night Trap was adult-oriented or whatever, blah, blah, blah. So while all this is going on, Sega was actually developing another system. It was called the Sega Neptune, okay? And what the Sega Neptune was supposed to do was actually take cartridges, traditional Genesis cartridges, and make them 32-bit. At this point, we were going heavily into the bit wars, okay? Where the Genesis was 16-bit, the Sega CD was a CD add-on for it, so it was still technically 16-bit, but it had the capability of playing video, of doing high-res graphics, of doing CD-quality music. And Sega said, oh, well, since this whole war is about catchphrases and, you know, Genesis does what Nintendo don't, and yada 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 they said we need to really be the first company to jump to the next level and what they announced is that they were going to have a 32-bit system and what it was going to be called was the Sega Neptune. It was going to be a standalone system. You wouldn't need a Genesis. You wouldn't need a Sega CD. It would just be a Neptune where you could load cartridges, it would still be cartridge based, but it would be 32 bits, okay? So it was kind of weird, because when they announced that, they were like, well, aren't you kind of abandoning the Sega CD? Like, why are you saying that you're going to go back to cartridges if, the, the if you know, CDs were the future, you launched this, uh, an add-on that did CDs, but now you're going back to cartridges. It, it was kind of confusing. So what ended up happening was, they released the, what was called the Genesis, and I'm going to show you here. A lot of people don't even know that it's called the Genesis 32X. It's called the Genesis 32X. And what this was, was an add-on. Another add-on for your Sega Genesis. And this one actually fit either the classic or the, the, the newer model Genesis. And what this did was allowed you to play a new line of games, cartridge-based games, called 32X games. And as you can see, they're about the same size as Sega Genesis games. Um, and now this really confused the hell out of everyone at this point. All right? First of all, you've got your price point. The Sega Genesis at the time, keep in mind, this was the 90s, cost anywhere, really around $300. Eventually they lowered the price to like $200 and then, and then $150. But at the time, you're still going to pop a couple hundred bucks to get yourself a Sega Genesis. The Sega CD on launch cost about $300. Then, of course, later on, the price got reduced to around $200. So now you're, dropping, you're going to drop another couple hundred dollars on the Sega CD. Now you want us to buy another fucking add-on. Like, really? You want us to spend another, this was actually $200 at launch, another, so you're talking two or two fifty plus another two or two fifty plus another two hundred, seven hundred dollars for this console if you want it in its entirety, okay? That was complaint number one. Complaint number two is that once again, the 32X required its own fucking power source, and we're not talking a cord. Take a look at my power adapter over here. That's what it takes to hook up this fucking beast. Three giant black power blocks, okay? It's a mess. It's a fire hazard. It's really dangerous. And who at that time, honestly, was using these kind of surge protectors? Nobody. Everyone had those old school power strips that were long. On a single power strip, you can't even fit these three monsters. I can barely fit them on this fucking thing. So it was another major complaint. Why on earth do we need three power adapters to even hook this fucker up? And that's not even the worst part. <laughs> look at this thing. Just look at it. It looks like a fucking Terminator cyborg. Like, there's so many fucking wires on it. It's absolutely ridiculous. So what do we have here? Let's start on the bottom. This is your Sega CD, okay? Now, the Sega CD, if we didn't have 
this guy up here, the 32X uh, 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 attached, what you would want to do is you would have your power cord and you would have your audio out coming out of that, okay? Then you would have your video out coming out of your Genesis. Here's your power, here's your video out. Because we have the 32X hooked up, it's actually even more complicated. So now we've got a power cord here. We've got a special link cable linking the Genesis to the 32X, and the 32X has its own video out cord. So you're talking one, two, three, four, five, six fucking connections to get this thing to work. A major problem at the time was that the 32X actually came with this link cable. A lot of people lost the link cable, and guess what? If you lose that cable, you're shit out of luck. Your 32X doesn't fucking work. What actually ends up happening is the 32X will boot. It'll seem like it's going to work. But actually, when it goes to work, you're missing graphics. You'll actually play games with half the graphics. And I believe it was the Angry Video Game Nerd who made a video where he was trying to play Primal Rage, and the characters were invisible. It was just like the background moving back and forth. You could hear all the sound effects. That's the lawnmower we're going by. They're still mowing my lawn outside. Uh... But you couldn't see the dinosaurs. And so if you don't have that link cable, you're completely fucked, okay? So let's review. Extremely high price point. The fact that they rushed into two new systems, uh, like, back to back, and people didn't know how to take that. Like, are you supporting CD technology? Are you going back to cartridge? What's the deal here? And, of course, the, of the fact that it's a fucking beast to hook up with giant fucking power adapters. It's a horrible mess, Okay. So there's a lot of controversy at the time of, is this system even worth buying, okay? So when you have a line of games like the Digital Pictures games, where Sega put a lot of time and money into these guys and said, please develop lines of games that are full motion video based, a lot of people were very skeptical to try them out because they said, why am I going to spend another two to $300 on an add-on when you just announced another, uh, another attachment thing and then released it right away? It wasn't, it was very, very... It was chaotic at the time, because then, of course, keep in mind, Sega wasn't the only company in the game. You had Nintendo, who had the impending release of the Super NES, then they actually released the Super NES around the same time as, you know, the Sega CD, and you saw that the graphics were much better than the Sega Genesis, yet it was still 16-bit, and the music was actually really good. It wasn't CD quality, but the music was really good on the Super NES, and a lot of people said, well, I can just spend, you know, two to $300 on this one console and get better graphics and better sound. Why would I spend... All this money for fucking add-on upon add-on upon add-on. In addition to that, when the 32X was released, a lot of people said, well, how did this benefit the Sega CD games? I don't understand. Like, I bought these CD games, but I bought this. What benefit do I have? So really the answer was none. There was no benefit for regular Sega CD games. But if you actually owned one of the games that said it was a Sega CD 32X game, okay, like these re-releases that I got, what, it, what was said is that you would get better resolution video and more colors. So basically what happened is they were able to upgrade the size of the video on the screen during these full motion video games. Was it really that much of a change? Not really. Did it warrant re-releasing the games? Not really. It really what it was was a gimmick from Sega to say, oh, the games are better now. You should buy them if you didn't buy them before. So they were trying to push their product pretty hard during this period of time, okay? So that's the deal with this hardware. And it's just... To convince someone not only to buy a CD add-on, then to, to, to tell them to, oh, don't worry, we know what we're doing, by the way, here's another add-on, to make matters even worse, okay? They announced that they were going to, like I said, they were going to release that Sega Neptune. It never came out. What ended up happening was later on, I believe, they actually released a prototype. Uh, it was like a hybrid of these two, but it never made it to market. So the Neptune was never released. And next thing you know, very shortly they announced the Sega Saturn. And the Sega Saturn was supposed to be, oh, now it's CD-based, but it's 32-bit. It's a better system. So now people were like, in a span of two to three years, you've completely fucked us. You told us that, okay, the next step is CD, so we bought this. Then you told us the next step was 32-bit, so we bought this. Now you're abandoning the whole fucking thing to work on a new system in a span of like two to three years. And people were flipping out. And like, what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to trust Sega? So could... The digital pictures line of games done better if all this stuff wasn't going on? Probably. They probably would have had a bigger chance to succeed if 
they didn't weren't in this turmoil of do we trust Sega for doing this, then jumping to this, then jumping to another thing so quickly? A lot of people were like, well, Nintendo is not doing that. Nintendo just made one system. They seem to be supporting it. Why are we going to spend all this money, have fucking 100 power cords hooked up? We don't know if we should trust them. And so really, I, I believe it was a detriment to trying to do this, to jump into this full motion video technology, when a lot of people didn't even trust Sega at the time. So that's the story of what happened at the time with the hardware and all the, the kind of controversy and stuff that was going on at the time. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pick a couple games today to jump into. And over the course of Digital Pictures Week, which is Monday through Friday of this week, I'm going to be playing different games every single day. We're going to be exploring the different genres of gaming that these guys tried to do. What I'm first going to do when I play a lot of these games, I'm going to try to do like an honest effort where I don't know anything about the game. I'm just going to try to f jump into it and play it and figure it out for myself. Then if I'm uh, having difficulty or I can't figure it out, I'm going to either read the instruction booklets or even go online look for a couple facts to see if people can explain how to actually play these games. Because you're going to understand once you see some of the gameplay of these games what I mean by I'm going to need facts to figure them out. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I will be coming back with some playthrough or gameplay footage of these games later today, so definitely check it out, and that will be continuing throughout the whole week. At the end of the week, I'll have kind of a retrospective of everything that we've experienced, and we'll go from there. So Digital Pictures Week launching next.